Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer on this Palm Sunday. We will celebrate with palms the entrance of our Lord into Jerusalem, and then as we hear further in this story, walk the way of the cross. I invite you to join us with your hearts, and if you have one, a bulletin that we mailed out to you. I hope all of this is to your joy and betterment. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven, heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord our God, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he got near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks upon the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he now approached the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the heaven in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches along his way. Let these branches be for us a sign of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name, may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.
you send your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of this great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and may also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you, that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to you. The congregation may be seated until I invite you to stand. Then the whole assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse Jesus, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis of an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, Pilate sent Jesus off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, because he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about Jesus and was hoping to see him perform some miracle. Herod questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priest and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and mocked him. Then Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence, and have found this man not guilty of any of your charges against him, neither as Herod, for he sent me back to us. Indeed, this man has done nothing worthy of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then the elders all shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him. A third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But the elders kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that Jesus be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. Pilate released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. And then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, 
What will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. Please stand. When they came to the place which is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over Jesus that read, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who was hanging there kept deriding Jesus and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly. But we're getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when the crowd who gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all Jesus' acquaintances, including the women, who followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. In God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and I start wondering about motives, even daring to wonder about Jesus' motive. Why did he do it? I mean, why did he go to the cross? A week before he had the city at his feet, he entered Jerusalem as his great ancestor David had entered Jerusalem on a donkey, to symbolize that he came in peace. He had only to ask, and the crowd would have risen up against the Romans, risen up against the priests who ran a corrupt market in the very grounds of the temple. We know that Jesus was, is, a master of words. One of a very few who can weave words together in such a way that they stick in our hearts and they stick and change the history of the world. He could have done that. 
Even the devil realized that Jesus could have ruled the world. Do you remember at the beginning of his ministry, the devil offers him all the kingdoms on earth. Instead, when they came for him in the garden, he went and in two, now three forums, he answered questions from men who are actively trying to twist his words, were seeking his death, were really enjoying his shame, and would take any steps to make sure not only that he should die, but he should die the most shameful death that they could envision. The death for bandits and tra traitors. Why did he stand quietly before the priests, before Herod, before Pilate? Why did he not summon up those legions of angels call down heaven upon their heads and sweep away the lies and the injustice, bury them in the hot center of the earth. Paul says, Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Paul also tries to understand what Jesus did on the cross in Romans by saying that God made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of Christ. Jesus allowed himself to be shut off from God on the cross as fully shut off and shut out as human sin is shut out from the holiness of God so that we could be pulled out of sin into a new and righteous way of life. When I was a young woman, there was a very bad thunderstorm and snowstorm one afternoon in my hometown of Washington, D.C. with microbursts. It had been cold for days and there was ice on the river and a plane took off from the airport and could not maintain altitude and then crashed into the bridge near the airport the 14th street bridge and went down most of the plane slipped under the water but part of the end of the plane the tail still stood out and as People desperately tried to save people, and a helicopter came throwing out a rope. One man, a man by the name of Arlen Williams, caught the rope from the hovering helicopter. Then he laid himself down on the floor, the door of the sinking plane, and kept handing that rope to other people so they could climb it, and kept handing life jackets. And when the helicopter took the people it had rescued and went back for more, Williams was caught by the debris of the plane and pulled under. He put his own life on the line for the lives of others, strangers to him because he saw it as the right thing to do. He died. But others lived because he gave his life for them. Jesus did the same. Only, again, listen to Paul. He did not count equality with God a thing to be held on to. Paul is struggling to describe who Jesus was and is. God come to rescue us, rescue us who are not strangers to him, but to place his body on the cross so we could have life. Life now in God's grace, life later in eternal life, and life eternal when the world is renewed and we will get our bodies back. 
renewed, resurrected, as Jesus did. Did Jesus know all that would happen? If he was fully human, he could not be all-knowing. He might have had glimpses, but we humans are limited in what we know. The Gospels show us elsewhere that he has to ask, just like we do, who touched me? Where are you going? Like us, he had to act on faith. Like us, he had to take the nature of the Father as a matter of trust, which meant to take up his cross and walk that final terrible road from which there might be no returning. Why did he do it? John tells us that Jesus said that he had loved his disciples as fully as God had loved him. And if he loves us as the Father loves us, because Jesus is God come to be with us, then it's not people in the aggregate that he loves, like you or I might say, oh, I love my country, or I love those people. No, he loves you, and you, and you, and you, and me, and you. That is why he went to the cross for love, and he laid himself down that you might live. Amen. prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are loved. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all, for all who work for justice, freedom, for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and George and Michael, Fraser, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the people of Ukraine and those who have died there. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. I want to welcome those of you who are joining us online.
you have the capacity to come on during Holy Week. Our services will be on Thursday, Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. with the washing of paint, followed by our overnight vigil of watch. Uh, on Friday, we have two services at noon and at uh, 7 p.m. the Good Friday service, and at 6.30 we will also do the Stations of the Cross. On Easter Sunday we will have our traditional services at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. I invite you to join us in any of those services. I am grateful that you are joining us today for Palm Sunday. If you have any questions or would like to contact us, uh, on the bulletin and on the website is our contact information. And we hope that you have been blessed by our music and by the reading of the scriptures and will be blessed spiritually by communion. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
happens to Christ God to you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God. We thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of our Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always.